Well, I hope that frame works out, because I can't see it. Also, I'm uncomfortable. Oh. That's better. Okay. Um, this is an installment of Joe Progo Raw, which is why I'm uncomfortable because I oh because. So in an effort, because these are really really like making these, but they're hard they're really hard for me to make, but in a good way. Does that make sense? So anyways, I've decided um to do something different for myself to make this easier. Here's the thing. Um I live in Washington State in the United States, um, where it is legal, marijuana is legal recreationally and medicinally, and I am a medically authorized person, marijuana patient. I'm medically authorized because of PTSD and IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome. Did you want to learn all this about me today? You did. So, I have um, found that it is Ten times, a hundred times, it is, here's what I've found. I was at my dispensary the other day with my partner and saw this shirt, that, or this sign they have there that said, it was talking about veterans who have PTSD and how it's like 22 veterans a day or a minute, I can't remember, and that's a big difference. 22 veterans um, take their own lives. So, um, and the sign said that, um, medical marijuana is safer than PTSD. And I'm like, yes, it is so much safer than PTSD because PTSD is really dangerous. Um, so anyways, that was a really long introduction to tell you that I'm going to smoke a bowl while I talk to you about this because I'm nervous to talk about it. So this is my pipe. Her name's Beluga. And I'm smoking um, a strain called Nigerian Sunshine, which is PTSD specific, and it has, it's really helpful. So today I want to talk to you, oh I need my paper that tells me what I want to talk to you about. <laughs> See I wrote down all my video ideas today. Okay, so today I'm wanting to talk to you about um, childhood hunger and disordered eating and suicidal ideation. It's going to be a fun one. So, <coughs> as you've learned a few minutes ago, I have irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, um, which means that, um, it's a syndrome of symptoms, so they, nobody knows like what causes irritable bowel syndrome, but it's fairly common. Um, and what that means is that I just have, like, I have regular, pretty intense, I guess, abdominal pain. Like, my intestines cramp a lot, and it's really painful, and there's just a lot that goes into IBS that's really uncomfortable and painful and hard to manage because it's not clear what causes it and so managing it is difficult. Um, so part of what I believe caused my IBS is being is being hungry when I was a kid. So um, here we go. When I was growing up we um, there were seven children in my family and two parents for most of the time and um, I both my parents are still alive they're just divorced. Um, so there were a lot of children in, and my dad was a social worker and didn't make very much money. I mean, made an, enough for a modest family, but he and my mom had a very, very large family. So often there wasn't really enough for everybody to get their fill. Like we would each, it was like, there would be something to eat every meal, but whether it was enough to feel full to like that was a different, that wasn't, that didn't happen all the time. Um, and it got worse as I got older, like, 
because we were all we were all teenagers all at the same time and teenagers eat so much because we're growing you're growing when you're a teenager you need to eat a lot um and um i was because i'm an older kid in my family I'm not a kid anymore, I'm an adult, but at the time I was an older kid, and older kids tend to have to take care of younger kids, like, this is why I don't like big families, um, because there aren't enough adults to go around, so children have to become adults, so I became an adult, and I was making menus and planning meals and taking care of my siblings to make sure we had enough to eat, because my parents weren't, I don't want to talk about them right now, we're focusing on hunger, my parents weren't available in this thing. Um, so anyway, so it was like, I was acutely aware of like how much food we had and we only got to go food shopping every two weeks. And so I was really aware of like, after seven days, we would be running low on food. Like we would need to go shopping again to get produce or to get meat. And we wouldn't be able to for another week because there wasn't money or I'm not sure why. Um, just a minute. So, um, what this did to me is that, um, I already knew, like, I kind of knew in my head that I was very aware that we didn't have enough food and I knew what hunger felt like because it, I felt it often, like, and it's really painful to be hungry when you're at any age, at any stage of your life, being hungry is painful, but when you're a little kid, it's really, really painful. Um, and I did not want my younger siblings to have to feel that pain. Like, I did not want them to have to, like, I didn't want them to know pain existed. I, that's what I wanted for my siblings. And it's because of how much pain I was in, and I couldn't stop it. Like, I didn't even know how to stop it. And so I just poured all that energy back into my little siblings, little 12-year-old me cooking meals. Because I was like, I'm not going to let my siblings starve the way that, like, my parents would let us starve. Not that they were, like, letting us starve. I, like, but it, they were in a lot of ways. Not, that's probably more dramatic than it needs to be. I don't know. It's really hard to talk about this because I was also told my whole life that like that like we were fine and we had plenty and that there were people literally my parents would tell us like there are children in Africa who don't have enough food so you should really eat that like somebody's leftovers on their plate um, <clears throat> and what that like that didn't help me at all because it just created this like guilt twisted thing in me where I was like I feel guilty about eating because there are people who apparently need the food more than I do so I started to restrict my eating like I would choose I would usually serve myself like first or last and if I served myself first I would take a very small amount because I wanted there to be enough for everyone and if I served myself last there wouldn't be very much left and so I'd get the leftover like whatever was left and that made me feel better emotionally because even though I was in pain and hungry, my siblings probably weren't. And that made me feel better. Like, I could control something. Um, so, um, fast, now I'm, now I'm an adult. And, um, uh, it took me a long time to, like, and I've had health problems, like digestive problems, really painful ones, out since I was very little. And it's taken me a long time to kind of understand, come to terms with, like, the way that I eat is disordered, which means that it's an eating disorder. And it's not because, and here's, like, growing up I was told that eating disorders were because you wanted to be thin or because you wanted to eat your feelings or, like, those were the options. Or you wanted to, like, throw up stuff. And for me, my eating, like, my eating disorder has nothing to do with wanting my body to look a certain way, but it has everything to do with being so scared that I will run out of food that I don't want to eat my food. I just want to stare at it. Like, just want to be surrounded by food and not have it disappear. I just want it to stay there and how it is. And so, like, even now, where, like, most 
most of the time my partner and I have plenty of food. We do go through patches where it's hard to get enough food, which is really challenging. Like that's that's a hard thing to deal with, but mostly we manage. Um and like but but I still tend to like restrict how much food I let myself eat because I don't want to run out. Because I don't ever want to have, like, because I don't want to feel that pain of not having enough food. But by not eating enough, I feel pain about not having enough food. And, like, and then it starts a cycle of, like, then I feel hungry. And when I'm hungry, I feel really, really sick. And so, of course, you don't want to eat when you're sick. Which is, like, a bonus for the disordered eating that happens to me. Um, so, yeah. Uh, something, and something that... I think I'm able to like understand this about myself at last and like actually start to maybe recover from that or like order that a little differently. It's because like it's because my suicidal ideation symptoms like those are down to such a low level now that I don't even I don't consider myself suicidal right now, which is amazing. Like that's a, whoa, cool, good job, Joe. Yay. I have to celebrate every time because I know that it might not, it won't always be this way. I know that there will be more points in my life where I will want to die. And that's okay. I'm like, I made a video talking about this last week and then my camera deleted it. And so you didn't get to watch that. But I talked for 10 minutes about how I understand that suicidal ideation and me are like, we're intimate. And it doesn't mean that and all it means is that that's something that I deal with. And at the moment, I'm not suicidal. And in the future, there might be a time when I am again. And I have tools to deal with that if that happens, when that happens. Right now, because I'm not wanting to die, I can sort of like look at my life and be like, honey, you don't need to do this to yourself because you want to live. So I've been looking at like why I restrict my food and like, why I decided I didn't need as much food as anybody else, as everybody else. Because I still think that, like, my dog and my partner and my birds even, like, that they deserve food before I do. And it's because, like, I thought that my life, I thought that I was going to kill myself because I was suicidal when, I started being suicidal when I was 12. And so, like, maybe even before that, but that's when it was, like, that's when I knew. And so for, like, 14 years, I thought that I would end by, like, that my life would end by suicide. I really thought that. I was fighting it as hard as I could, and I, it's like, I didn't want to die, in all honesty, but I didn't know what else to do. Didn't know how to make my life work, and so, like, when that's, like, when the struggle of your life is that you, like, you, when that's your struggle... Who the fuck cares if you're hungry or have enough food? Who the fuck cares if you're wasting away? Because, because it felt like death was so imminent. And so, like, like I had no choice. Um, <clears throat> so... Having gotten through that 14 years of finding that I'm this person and that I love this person and that being this person, Joe Proganoskis, they, them pronouns, hand flapping everywhere, like, I am happy as this person. And finding that, it makes me want, <clears throat> excuse me, finding that out about myself, I'm like, I would really like to stop. I would really like to start feeding myself like I'm going to be alive for the rest of my life. How, like, you know? Um, yeah. And that's, like, the point of this whole video, I think, was to get to, like... Like, it, I... To, like, it... I see the point, I see that what's happening is not actually helping me to enjoy my life, like, restricting what I'm allowed to eat when I'm running low on food, 
makes my life more painful because I get pain in my intestines. Literally, I start, it hurts. And it hurts for like a week after afterwards because it take, it's not like an overnight, oh, I feel better, I ate a cup of soup. You have to like eat regular meals for like a week or more. Um, so... So I just want to talk about that. I want to talk about eating disorders that don't look like classic I want to be thin or I want to eat my feelings stereotypes. Those aren't classic. Those are stereotypes and eating disorders aren't like that. Some are, but mine isn't. Um, and I uh, yeah, that's all. So um, <gasps> that's enough. know what else to say. I like, I need to figure out a way to end videos more. I need like a key phrase to end videos on so that I can just end them because I don't know how to do endings very well. This is Joe Progo. Raw. Hope you uh, are okay after that. Hope I am too. Smoke weed. Or don't if you're underage or it's illegal or blah blah blah. I don't know. I don't want to make any moralistic statements at all. Bye.